Hallelujah! Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning! It is a great day, and you know what? I'm so excited because I finished it! So what do you think? Isn't this just awesome? I just love it when the Lord gives me a vision and... Ta-da! Isn't it just... I just love it. So, joy. We all need some joy and... I have a little, oh, my little special guest here, Miss Alice. I welcome each and every single one of you today. We are going to get right to this message, a new season, a new message, a new you. Spring is sprung, fall is sprung. We are moving in the things of the Lord, and I welcome you here today because it is a great day for us to rejoice. And so if this is your first time checking out all of our videos for Julie Blood Ministries, welcome. God bless you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for partnering with us as we are sharing this world, this word in the remote parts of the world. And as we always must start off, let's give God some praise and glory and just pray. Father, I thank you today. I thank you for this glorious day. I thank you for everything in this day, the trials we overcome. I thank you for your word and what your word has given us to see today. I thank you, Father, for these words to go forth that will permeate and saturate us all. So I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And you know, we're going to get right to some joy. How about that, right? Amen and amen. How God would just work that out. Now, we're going to get into 10 plus, perhaps some additional ones, of reasons to have joy. Now, what is joy? G joy is Jesus, others, you. Okay, so Jesus, others, you. And as we get a little bit further into the message of joy, you're going to be seeing a few things about, hey, Where'd my joy go? How come I don't have it? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly why and where it's at. So the first reason that you should or reasons to have joy, reason number one is found in the book of Matthew. And you're going to see that, yes, the world, the world is going to, to, to the pooper. We, we know the world is a, a mess. It's not even a hot mess because it's not hot. It is a mess. And just because the world is freaked out just because the people in the world are what they are does not mean I am not keeping my joy because here is what my Bible tells me and your Bible tells you this too Matthew chapter 9 you're gonna be all right thank you chapter 9 of Matthew and by the way she just turned 15 so she's still kicking it so if any of you are 105 in people years or have pets that are kicking it over 100 i want to know because i just give god the glory in it for every single day that this precious little olive is still here she sometimes doesn't know where she's at but you know what she's in good hands praise the lord so chapter 9 of matthew verse 2 check this out so reason number one that you should have joy or reason to have joy is that your sins are forgiven hallelujah because i know like the the amount of scroll of my sins are just so long i don't know about you but at least that was me so 9 2 of matthew and behold they brought to him a man sick of the palsy lying on a bed and jesus seeing their faith said unto the sick of the palsy son be of good cheer Thy sins be forgiven thee. Hallelujah. So, okay, a couple of different things in this, but check this out. He saw their faith. The only way that your sins will be forgiven is by faith, and it takes faith to come to know Jesus Christ. And by, you start to see where we're going with this. However, I will tell you this. Your sins are forgiven. So, reason number one, to have joy. Your sins are forgiven. Now, you say, I don't need no Jesus and I don't need no God. Well, then you're just going to hell and I can't help you. <laughs> I can just tell you about Jesus Christ and why you need a Savior and to come into the family of God because he loves you. However, there are still some that doubted. We know this. And there will always be poor among you and there will always be those that walk in disbelief. That's them. I'm keeping my joy and I'm going to share it with you today. And number one reason is because your sins are forgiven. Hallelujah. Like, hello. Hallelujah. Reason number two to have joy is found 
in the book of John. So turn with me to the book of John, chapter Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, chapter 16. And it is in verse 31. see if she just stays still. She's kind of been freaking out a little bit lately. 31. Jesus answered them, do you now believe? What's it going to take for you? Do you now believe I've been saying I am he now? Are you, when, are you now? Are you going to believe now? Behold, the hour cometh. Yea, is now come that ye shall be scattered every man to his own and ye shall leave me alone and yet i am not alone because the father is with me these things i have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye still have tribulation but be of good cheer i have overcome the world okay reason number two to have joy he gave you peace. He also says in John, my peace I give you, not as the world gives you. I think John 15, 7. So uh, if you don't have joy, that's your fault. <laughs> it just, it, it's not because Jesus didn't do enough. It's not because God doesn't love you. And no, <laughs> he gave you peace. I've spoken unto you that you might have peace in me see so there are only certain things that will come to you through jesus christ you can't get them over there you can only get them here and i see a little bit of a shadow i don't know how to fix the shadow so if any of you are lighting directors <laughs> can can you help me fix the the we got like a diamond we'll just take the diamond shape thing but the shadow so yeah i just happen to see we got shadow today but that's okay no five o'clock we're good but you get it that it, there's peace Peace is in Christ. It's not outside. It's not outside. Some of you have been seeking peace in all the wrong places as you're looking for love. And it's not there either because those things are only in Jesus Christ. So when you get encapsulated in the fullness of him, uh, there you are. See, and maybe some of you have come across, and maybe I might be that person to you, but there was this woman that I knew many years ago, and she was just so happy all the time. I just wanted to slap the happy out of her. She was just so annoying to be around because I just was like, and I just, I just really just wanted to slap the happy out of her, even though, because I thought it was fake. But however, I think she was onto something, and I really don't think that it was happiness, because happiness is just what's happening now, and you don't need a degree and spend 20 grand to go get a degree in Jersey about happiness when you can just be in the joy of the Lord, and Jesus others you, and live in it, and save the 20 grand, and, and have it overflowing, see, because when you move in the abundance of the things of the Lord, it's just there, like the fruit of the Spirit. You can't try to love people. You just love them because it's who you are. When you have to try, it's not who you are, which means now you're a faker, <laughs> and, and you won't fake it till you make it, because fakers never really make it because they're frauds, <laughs> in, in scripturally, okay? So, when you see that he gave you peace, and your sins are forgiven, how could you not have joy? Like, we're getting away from that. We're moving here and in all this goodness of seeing joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Remember that song? It's all there. Okay. Reason number three. You, dear brother, dear sister, is found in 2 Corinthians. Sometimes you just got to go on a dig. You got to say, today is the day I'm going to dig. We don't need the big dig in Boston. Or is it now the big dug? Did they finish the dig and now it's the dug? <laughs> We've got big dug. It's dug. It's dug. We're done. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And no, I've not drank coffee because I don't drink coffee. This is just the joy of the Lord today. Now, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Another reason that you should have joy is because of this reason. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. You are a new creation in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, I love this because like we put on the new self. And and I know in in my life, I'll tell you what happened. So I moved from Denver to Dallas to start a ministry, left everything behind. Now, when, when my 
truckload of items arrived. I was not yet in Dallas and I was renting this apartment and the leasing agent said they didn't know who I was. So my movers left. So for two months, I had three changes of clothes, my Bible and um, coats and this big stuffed duck that rode with me in my mini. That was it. Not a smart packer at that time. When all of my items arrived, it was kind of awkward because I looked forward to all my, all my stuff and my stuff and oh, I ain't this on the wall and this and my great couch and that, da, 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 da. and then it was like, ew, oh my, that's not, that, that's not a good look. What, what, what happened? <laughs> And so as you begin to grow in the things of the Lord, see, I was growing and that separation from everything I owned, that two months, there was so much growth that when everything arrived, it was like, I can't put that on. That is the former self. That just will, oh no, honey, we are not there. We are going over here. And this over here is the, in the dead need to bury its own. And so that was, that was the first time I really experienced that in seeing it, that, wow, never mind if the, I items fit that's a different thing it was they didn't fit who I was becoming see you are a new creation in Christ there are things you've been dragging around that are not who you are you need to cut the soul ties you need to get rid of them you need to go in your closet those things that you think you're gonna work you never will you won't because even when you think you're gonna go try they will be to yesterday and you think you're gonna wait till those bell bottoms come back now they're on their way however you don't know when and by that time don't you think that God will give you enough to go buy a new pair like let's make room for new let's not get, continue to hold well you know we're going into a recession and I might need those bell bottoms and I might need a God is still God. God is able to feed you in feast and famine. See, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus, and you need to own that and walk as who you are so that you can say, you know what? All things new, because what does he say? He's a new creation. Old things are passed away. Who drags around dead? This is kind of like, I'll give you an example of this, root canals. This is the most incredible thing that people don't know about when it comes to a root canal. When something is dead in the body, it's time to let it out. But they don't do that with the root canal most uh, mainstream dentists. They, they, they leave the deadness and it causes many other illnesses and diseases that they don't want you to know about. So if you've ever had a root canal and then you've had other, other health issues after that, that's because you're carrying around something dead within your body that should not be there. And there's documentaries actually about this as well. So when we look at the dead, okay, old creation, old things are passed away. There is a time and a season for everything under the sun. So Solomon says, a time and a season for collecting wives and concubines and a time to collect more and a time for, I wonder how many of them ever lived. Like how long did they live? However, you get the idea. You're a new creation in Christ. There is a reason to be joyful about that. Because if you look at your old self, would you be friends with you? I surely would have nothing in common with who I was when I lived where I lived. I don't even, I, there's, there's just, <laughs> no. We, we would not be compatible because I would want to talk of the things of the Lord. And that former self would not really have, you know, talk about, I went to church. Yay. We would have nothing in common. That's, that's a great sign of growth. So when you are looking at that, you are a new creation in Christ. Oh, yes, honey. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. You are new creation in Christ. Celebrate it. All things are passed away. Behold, all behold, all things are become new. Every single thing. Now, if you are a new believer in Christ, okay, and you're pressing in and you're like, everything is so overwhelming because it's new and it's new. Yes. Every single thing is new to you because you are a new creation and every single thing is new. But once you grow and you continue to mature, then you're going to see, okay, now I understand this. Now I understand this. And there's a time that, that the new is the new and, and new is great. New is great. But sometimes we want to hold into the nostalgia. Why? I remember someone coming to my home and they're like, you don't have a whole lot of pictures of growing up. No, because I grew, I grew up. <laughs> I, why, why do I? No, I have pictures of where I'm going. See, because this is where I'm going. I want to be looking at the better things. I don't want to be look, look back. No, I'm looking forward. Now, do I have little ones of this little, oh, my little precious little lip? Yes, because she's just so cute. And I have to remind her, look, get up and walk. <laughs> 
walk, precious doggy. Get out, your little legs move. Do, 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 do. You're a new creation in Christ today. These legs are moving. Do, 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 do. Sometimes they're a little bit, a little bit stiff. However, we're still getting it done. Say new creation. You new creation. Keep that in mind. So go around your home. You're going to see some stuff. You're going to see, why am I dragging this with me? Why am I paying money to move stuff? When I moved all this stuff, I started seeing how much stuff I unloaded. All the stuff that I had been hauling around and hauling around. I'm like, really, Lord? I spent all this money to haul this stuff to all these states to get here. And this stuff is just stuff that is not even who I am. I wish I knew who I was going to become, so I never would have taken none of that with me and had to even bother with it which that's just the thing. So when you look at where you're going, is this, is this who I'm becoming? No. Okay. See ya. Cause it may be who someone else is becoming all those fabulous clothes that you have in your closet with the tags on them that you never wore. Even the ones that your husband don't even know you have. Oh, I've seen those closets. Yes, they, they exist. And oh, my husband doesn't know I bought that. Yes, he does. He sees a credit card bill. He just smiles because he loves you. Now point reason number four. Is also found in Corinthians, but 1 Corinthians. We are moving through this, and I pray that you are just seeing where you are in the Lord. This is 1 Corinthians 2. 16. Now, why should you have joy? reason that you should have joy is because you have the mind of Christ. So, some of you have the mind of Christ. You just haven't yet got the revelation that you do. <laughs> When you get the revelation, I have the mind of Christ, guess what? You'll start thinking like him. You'll start behaving like, like him. You'll be a Yeshua. You'll be a disciple of Yeshua and not just a Christian that sits in church and does nothing. You'll be producing fruit, not just, yay, I'm so Christian. No, you're not. Take the fishies off your car. You're not. You're just a faker. All right. So well, what's it say? First Corinthians 2, 16. For who hath known the mind of Christ, but that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. <gasps> Think on these things. Why? Because Jesus did. Take every thought captive. Oh, now I get it. It took me a long time to think like Christ. Because I'm like, well, what does he think like? What does he spend his day thinking about? Like when Jesus goes about, what does he think about? He sees all that. Does he take the time to think about all these people that are going to lie to him and betray him? What's he thinking about? Is he thinking about how can he, he can escape? Is he think, excuse me, thinking about the, what the words, or is he thinking about what they're going to say to him? And he's just shaking his head at the fact that they're so ignorant what they think they're going to say to him, that they don't even know the rebuttal. I mean, can you just imagine role-playing with Jesus in that? Okay, Jesus, so let's huddle up here. Now, notice when Jesus had a huddle up, he didn't. He never gave them the whole thing of, oh, pat, pat on the butt and go out there, guys. No, they just were men. See, we have a whole distorted idea of men. We think that men, society's distorted men. Study Jesus, the epitome of a man. Let's be clear. And ladies... I know he's taken. <laughs> he he's taken. However, <laughs> in this we have the mind of Christ. So what do you think about? Think about what? What do you think about? Where do your thoughts go? You will know whether or not you have the mind of Christ by what you think about. The Bible is very clear. Think on these things. Seek first his kingdom and all righteousness and all others shall be given unto you, which means you have to be thinking on these things. Think on the higher things. See, society has a plan to get you to never to have the Christ, to have the mind of the devil. How do we know this? Because it is part of the, the larger agenda. There, there's, a, there's a year coming up that will end in a 30. And by that time, they want you to own nothing and, and enjoy life with, with them owning you and, and to dumb down the education level to a sixth grade level, which is the whole purpose of a lot of the social media, is to keep people stupid. And it's incredible how it, well it works. How many people do you know that send you stupid videos that are just plain stupid? Ah, isn't this fun? No, it's stupid. Let's be clear. It's stupid. Now, I will set myself aside on this because I've been in a college environment for 22 years. And in the college environment, I deal with the stupidity. But that's not really stupidity. It's ignorance of 18 to 32-year-olds and some older. But the older, the older students don't really engage in, in the stupidity and the ignorance of some of these young ones. And I'm not coming against any of my students um, because they are where they are. Okay, so we all go through the stage of where we're growing up. But I, yes, I love my students. They make me laugh, actually. Uh, like, you need an app, Dr. J, so you never lose your keys. And then, and then he lost his phone and his keys. I'm like, how's that app working out for you? Ooh, you see that? 
Hey. No, 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 no. We, we got, we got, we got power and you, you're going to stay on. All these lights are staying on. Agree with me right now in Jesus name. So this kid thought that, you know, you just need this app and the app will help you never lose your keys. And then he lost his keys and he lost his phone. <laughs> How's that working out? <laughs> So, when we look at gaining the mind of Christ, okay, the mind of Christ, we're thinking on the greater things. We're not, we're not dumbing ourselves down to watch endless dumb videos of, of, of whatever people watch that is so low level consciousness that has them talking about it. It's a programming of the mind. Every single thing that you think has an impact on the brain that transforms the neurological components within the brain, as well as the electrons, the electrodes, and the neurons within the brain and then it all connects to the dendrites within the body which gives you a physical reaction all of this is based upon what you allow in your mind so the mind of christ is one of a new creation is one of peace is one of freedom it is not bondage it is not the wickedness and the evil and the depravity and the stupidity of this world so when you get around the people that have the mind of christ guess what you're in a whole new realm that's where you want to be. Find those people. They are there. You just may have to go on a, on a hunt or pray. They're there. Because then you're growing. Then you will leave better than you were when you entered. If you ever left a conversation with someone and you're just drained and you're tired and you're like, that was a waste of time. I want my time back. I want my energy back. Those are draining spirits. Get away from them. Because they're going to deplete your thinking. And you don't have time for that. You got to gain and walk in the mind of Christ to think on godly things. People that just want to endlessly argue and debate and talk about things that are just like, look, you believe what you believe. I believe what I believe. We can end it. We don't need to go around the mountain again because the Israelites proved that we don't need to keep doing that. Right? So with this, the mind of Christ, you have it. Uh, I may say manifest it, which is not a new age. That was Jesus first. Manifest in the mag uh, uh, manifold. Those are God words first. So, mind of Christ, you have it, operate in it. Your life will begin to change. So another reason that you should have joy is point number five found in the book of John. I command you to stay on. All of you. And you too. Oh, okay. John. We are in John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, wrong way. John 15. Now. Okay, listen to this. Why should you have joy? Reason number five, you should have joy is because Jesus loves you. I didn't know what order to put all these in because they're all just so equal. Jesus loves you. Like, if you can't be joyful of that and you can't walk in joy knowing that, then, then I'll pray for you. Because here's what he says. Verse 9. Okay. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. I remember the day that I got it. Now, I prayed when I was five, that Jesus would be my escape. And you all know the story with my Holly Hobby doll. And a donor actually sent me a Holly Hobby doll, which was pretty incredible. And, and so I prayed that Jesus would be my escape. I had no idea how I knew to do that. But I will tell you this, I got the answer in 2016, October. So I've been praying for many years. How would a five-year-old know to pray Jesus would be your escape, right? But Jesus was, and here we are, and to God be the glory, I got the answer to the prayer. And, and here's the thing was that throughout my life, you may not be able to see it, but if you really look back, I remember the day that, that it was like the biggest wow that you came for me. Like you came for me. Not because of me, but because of your love for me, a homeless 15 year old, <laughs> you came for me. If that and his love does not bring us to a place of joy, we have our priorities messed up. Because what he did is so magnificent and yet it's so diminished by people of the world. We just slough it off because we're so busy trying to get 
Stop trying to get and let his love move through you. Then you'll see what you got everything. You don't have to go and get because you've already got it. See, you, you'll be more separated from the things of this world the more that you're embraced in his love. And, and that's it. He loves you. He tells us this. And it's so incredible. For as the Father loved me, so have I loved you. Continue ye in my love. Just continue in my love. It's there. You're in it. I, I, I love you. What, do you what, 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 how else can I demonstrate it? <laughs> I died on the cross for you because of my love for you because you mean that much. And many believers walk around, I don't get this, and I don't get that, and I don't have this, and this isn't fair, and this isn't right. No, what's right is the fact that you're just, is, is you're just a spoiled little brat operating like the Israelites did with the spirit of ungratefulness and a, and a heart of nothing and unthankfulness, and you need to get a priority straight. You need to start looking here at what he's done for you, because we already are told we're going to go through some things in this world. Rejoice in the trials of you because they strengthen you, and he loves you, see, but in religion, it separates us from his love because religion just comes about works-based. And if I do this good enough, then he'll love me. No, he already loves you separate from that. And I had to walk through that because I grew up in a performance space. What do you think of personality, an A-type personality? People drop, people, people personify and glorify themselves. I'm a type A. You know what that is? Is it's a stronghold that is derived out of perfectionism, trying to please a parent that can never be pleased. Type A, and then you got to do more and do more and do more, and then pride yourself on the fact that you're doing more. But Jesus didn't say you're a human doer. He called you a human being. There's a difference. There's a difference in being and doing. When you are in his presence and you are still in his presence and receiving of his love, that's all you have to do, which is a very hard job, thing to grasp in many ways. But when you get to that place and you just sit there, just sit there, which I can tell you how hard it is. I've counseled people that they just can't, they can't stay still. I have to do that. Who's telling you you have to do all that? Who was telling you? Who was telling you you need to paint the grill before you can have a barbecue? Who was telling you that you need to have a new roof before you can have the in-laws over? Who's telling you that you need to get a facelift before, before you get married? Who's telling you these things? Because if he loves you the way that you are, he loves you. He does, he's, he's the only one that will love you without a, without a condition of your weight. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she gained some pounds. I got to divorce that one. Mm. Oh, she never should have married you in the first place, but I digress. Her peck, picker was off. <laughs> but, you see, he's the only one. I said picker. He's the only one that loves you without conditions. If you don't have joy over that, like, really? He loves you. There has never been a moment in your life that you have never not been loved. You, from before the foundation of the earth to now, you have been loved. Hallelujah. Do you see it? When I got it, it was like you came for me. Wow. That's the God that we serve. His son came for us. That's some love right there. We don't need a card. <laughs> we got a whole word. He loves you. Rejoice and celebrate. I tell you to get up and just pause and just start dancing around. But some of you may be at work and listen to this and don't get don't 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 just get in an accident. But you can just shout it from the rooftop. Hallelujah. He loves me. Ladies, he loves you. He loves you. You don't need to go chase a man to get some earthly man to, to have a condition that he'll love you if you do this. That is a lie from the pit of hell. You are already loved. You are already valued. He, he loves you. It's why he died for you. And your joy in the Lord is your strength that will endure for also all those ordained days that he has for your life. And you get up, your anointing is not bound by a ring of some earthly man who may or may not even know his authority or identity in Christ Jesus. But Jesus knows his identity and he knew why he died for you because he loves you. Hallelujah. And I'm not coming against men because guess what, men? He loves you too. You are his bride, the bride of Christ. He loves you. You don't have to try to go and kill yourself to get more and more and more so that she will like you and think that you're enough because your bank account says so. Your value is not found in a bank account. Your value is in him because he died for you. Because he loves you. Hallelujah. 
and you don't need to go switch your identity. No, you are a man and you are a woman and he created you as such. So it says in his word, you can look in the mirror and figure that out. Amen and amen. We need some joy over this today. Now, reason number six that you should have joy is found in the book of Ephesians. You have access to the Father. See, two messages ago, I shared this. There are things that only come by being in a relationship with Jesus Christ. You do not have any access to the Father without being in a relationship with Jesus Christ. Why should you have joy? Because through Christ you have a relationship and access to the Father. Hallelujah. Yeah, so you can have a relationship with Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God. All three. That blew my mind when I got that revelation. Because I was tired with Jesus. Now, I looked at God as uh, my dad that was never around. And then I didn't know squat about the Holy Spirit. But no, I mean, it was, I did not, I read the scripture, but once I got it, everything, then it was like, oh, and then add wisdom to the picture. I got a sister. Hey, <laughs> hey, God is good and what he's bringing. So 218, you got to start seeing all of what is there for us. Now, check this out. Therefore, through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Wow. Yes. Hallelujah. So we have access to the Father by the Spirit under Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. No one has access to the Father but through me. So says Jesus, the words of Jesus. Okay. So when you get this, when you get this, you will see, yes, I have access to the Father only through Jesus Christ. My joy is complete because I am a new creation in Him through Jesus Christ who died on that cross for me, that forgave me of my sins and left me His peace, and I've got the mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Do you see, saints, do you see what you've been given? If there's ever a breakthrough to get, it is this, that you are free, that joy is Jesus, others you, the depravity of the world is for the world. Let them rot in it. Get out of it. Stop carrying around the Christ not needed network everywhere you go. It's going to kill you. You don't have time for that. Get the joy of the Lord. Carry that with you. That's why I just paint it on the wall. And every time I go by, I'm like, woo, yes, I need more walls. Lord, we got to work on that. <laughs> yes. And here's the funny thing. Um, I really was not a painter, okay, or an artist. Uh, I grew up in a household with a professional um, artist. I was not until, I mean, I could paint solid colors on a canvas. <laughs> That's how I did it. <laughs> okay, I'm done. And it's just, you know, blue, one color. Yay, that's my art. <laughs> However, <laughs> God did this new thing and it's a new creation. And new times are abounding. And it's the same for you. So we got to remove some of these things. Well, I'm not this. Oh, you, that's because you keep saying it. Break those things off. And you're going to see. You have access to the Father. And you're going to see what he's doing. You're going to see so many new things. So that is Ephesians 2.18. We have access to the Father by one spirit. We are in one spirit moving to access with the Father. Hallelujah to, the, to, to, to God be the glory. See. Oh, this is so great. Now. Uh, this is found Nehemiah. Oh, we are going old now. Now, Nehemiah, oops, I got Nehemiah, Ezra, Nehemiah right here. This is number seven. He's like tucked in there. Nehemiah eight. Now, I like Nehemiah. Nehemiah is not deterred. See, a lot of people get deterred by a lot of things of the world. Not Nehemiah. He just prayed. What did he pray? Nehemiah 8.10. You can write this down. The joy of the Lord is my strength. You probably heard it, but wonder like, where's that rat written? Nehemiah. Yes. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat. And we think like keto is so new, right? Eat the fat. <laughs> Ah, ah, drink the sweet. Maybe this is where they got sweet tea in the South because it's really just like, wow. And when you come to the South, you just, just order tea and it's, it, it's just like a cup of sugar with a little bit of water in that. That was a shock. Drink the sweet and send portions to them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy unto the Lord. 
Neither ye be sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength. So if you have no joy, it's because you're not looking to the Lord for your strength. You're just depleted, which you would be. See, when you walk outside of the covering of the Lord or outside of the Lord in his fullness, well, you're going to get tired. You're just going to be standing out there in a hailstorm. All the stuff just coming upon you, spirit of the world. Okay. So as you see the joy of the Lord is my strength. Well, yeah, now you can walk in all these things because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Like, it's all right there. So, uh, if you don't have any joy, that's because you're looking in the wrong place at all the wrong things. What are you feasting your eyes on? The joy of the Lord is, is our strength. Nehemiah knew this. Nehemiah moved in a way. And, and I just love, and you can read the whole story about Nehemiah. I just think he's just cool. I like, I like how he was steadfast. And there's going to be some things that will come against you that will try to steal your joy, will try to steal your peace, will try to steal your direction and your future. But you say, not on my watch. You can be as angry as you want to be, but today I'm keeping my joy in the name of the Lord. You can fuss all you want. It has no impact on me. I'm just going to sit here and I might excavate myself out of your mess and continue to praise the Lord. Thank you for getting me out of here so I can continue to praise you. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, huh, interesting. One, two, three, four, five. Point number eight. Reason number eight is found in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter four. I love this, and I've had to rely on this more than you can realize. Philippians 4.13. I've got to find it. Philippians 4.13. It should give you joy. A reason to have joy, 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Outside of Him, I don't have any strength. Only reason why I'm able to get up and deliver these messages is because of him. There's no way. If I let my flesh get a hold of me, let me just say there would be no messages. Just, just, just being clear, because there are days I just don't feel like it. I just don't. I just don't. But you know what? It doesn't matter what I feel like because the joy of the Lord is, is my strength. And when I get moving in there, because if you, if you wait till you're stirred up to pray, honey, you will never be stirred up because the devil doesn't want you to. Because he knows once you start praying that you're praying. See, oh yes, he didn't want that. He does not want you to pray nor pray, which I do both. So the enemy's scared of me because when I pray, I pray. See, P-O-A-Y, P-O-E-Y. The devil runs to and fro. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. But not around me, because he knows. He knows. <laughs> he knows when I wake up, he better flee. Oh yes, and he does. Because we don't have time to be playing. No, we have time to pray. And so you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. So what is it you need strength to get through today? You need strength to get through your unruly children? Well, guess what? He'll give it to you. You pray. You start speaking life over those children. And I will give you a testimony about the children. We start praying over the children. And we pray every day for the children because the devil hates the children. They just want to steal these children and the school boards. And the United States government is trying to create this, this, uh, these laws that will put it to where the, where the states now rule over the children. Oh, yeah, they are wicked. They are very, very deceitful in what they are trying to do. So we pray for the children and the parents to walk in a sound mind. And let me tell you, there was one woman that called me and she said, here's a testimony. You prayed over the children and she said, there was my daughter at school she's like there was this girl at school and and uh, I was inquiring of the other parents about where this one particular girl went because she did not mean my daughter good oh that girl got transferred she just transferred <laughs> like like 24 hours after we prayed she gone hallelujah so we pray we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength what do you what what is it that you need strength to do what is it you need he's got it it's all there what do you need it's all there it is all there. All there. Now, also in here, reason to have joy. Philippians 4.19. You should have joy because here's the thing. 
my God, shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Now, your needs are provided for. The problem is a, little, a lot of times we don't differentiate between a need and a want. But our needs, you know what our needs are? His presence, his peace, which he's already given us. <laughs> but it's by his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. So he's provided for you already. What it is, is you have to get there to sit in it and, and saturate yourself and, and be in it. See, there's a difference when you, when you start growing in the things of the Lord and moving in this way, then you will be able to see how he moves in a way that he will provide. He will provide all your needs and his riches in Christ Jesus. So that means what do, that you, you still have to do your part. Well, yeah, you just sit there and then, oh, God's not, to, well, listen, God's not going to feed you with the spoon. He's going to give you the, feed, the spoon so you can feed yourself. Right? He teaches us how to fish. Okay, so when we begin to look at this, God, my God will supply all my glorious needs in Christ Jesus. All of them, right? All of them, all of them. Now, that's for you. Now, let me show you one more thing. And this, so that's, that was point number nine. Point number nine. And this is, this is number 10. Now, we can look at all these things, reasons that we should have joy because we have peace. Our sins are forgiven. We have everlasting life. Write that down, point number 10. You have everlasting life in Christ Jesus. Now, if you don't enjoy that, I, I mean, <laughs> hello, we have everlasting life in Christ Jesus. Everlasting life. He died so you could be free. Now, here's my final thing that I want to share with you, and then I'll give you a recap. I want to share this with you, that, that in Psalm 68, he tells us that he's a father of the fatherless, and a judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation. This is a very big deal. I said this before in 2014 on my TV program on Father's Day, actually. I delivered a message about fathers and Father's Day, about fatherlessness, the number one crisis that is facing America. Yes, all these other things, but fatherlessness. Because when we take fathers out of the home, we have no blueprint of God the Father. And that's really the war that we're fighting now is erasing. They are trying to replace God as make government our God and our father that we bow down to. And that is not a God. God is a father to the fatherless. See, but only if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So now we can really rejoice because you have a father. A father to the fatherless. See, so when you look at wherever you are, you have a father. You are not alone. Hallelujah! <laughs> you see this? Do you see this? Your sins are forgiven. Oh, hallelujah. You, he gave you peace. Okay, very cool. You're a new creation in Christ. You have the mind of Christ. He loves you. You have access to the Father. His joy is your strength. You can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. He will provide all your provision and glorious riches in Christ Jesus. You have everlasting life and a Father. How could you not have joy today and all days? It's all right there in his word for you. So I pray today you embrace it. I pray that you really recognize this and that you see what has been gifted to you by Jesus Christ. And so, Father, today I thank you for joy today. I thank you that we can see what we've not seen before. We cut off joylessness. We, we, we break off every, every, every blocker of joy in our lives in the name of Jesus. 
Father, we just shut down every single plumb line or every single line that's been in our and in our bloodline, Father, that has caused us to live depressed, isolated, and, 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 and without joy. We break that off, and today we claim joy. We claim victory in joy, for you are our joy. We thank you that it is Jesus, others, and then us, that as we transform our mind, as we walk in the mind of Christ, we will see that it doesn't matter what's happening in this world. It doesn't matter what the world is doing. It doesn't matter anything except where we are, whose we are, why we are, and what your plans are for our lives. So I thank you today, Father, that we can move in joy today, that we can move in peace today, that our needs are met, our needs are love of you, our needs really are time in your presence. We thank you, Father, that all the worldly stuff you take care of, you already know every hair on our head, and you already know all about the lilies, uh, Solomon tells us. So we thank you, Father, you clothe the lilies. You know that we have needs. So we thank you, Father, You, we, they, we, our joy is already in you because you already took care of them. So we give you the praise and the glory, Father, that we get our joy back. I thank you today, Father, that today we are getting up to get up, to rise up, to shout it out to the rooftop. Thank you. Thank you today, Father, that we are going forth saying hallelujah. We praise you today, Father. We give you the praise and the glory, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. <laughs> amen and amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. We pray every day, saints. Every single day, we pray at 12 o'clock. And let me say something. On Sunday's call, there was there was a, uh, well, more than one, one person I did not know until later that had a car issue. Actually, there were three people on the call that had car issues. And we said, no, 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 no. We are not receiving that. Guess what? Not even 24 hours later solution. Oh, bam. God showed up. He always does. So I pray that you just recognize the goodness and that you, you just call in every day at 12 o'clock. We pray 214-586-0411. And it's 12 o'clock central standard time. Every day we pray every Thursday night. I teach kingdom advancement. It's discipleship for those of you that, that know God's got something greater for you, that you want to, that you want to move in the advancement of God's kingdom on this earth. And maybe you've just been plagued hating things for a while, been a little pew potato. Now, now you're ready to just say, mm-hmm, I'm ready. You just dial in every Thursday night at seven o'clock. Go to julieblairministries.org for more information about every single thing we do. There are hundreds of, of hours of messages as well as blogs and prayers that will help you to move in this time and be prepared for what's to come. I love you so much. I pray today you are on fire for the Lord, that you are filled with joy everlasting. And I look forward to our next message. And you know what? I want to know your comments. I just, and please be nice, kind comments. Not, not, uh, not compliments, but kind, what does it speak to you? What is the Lord speaking to you through what he has created? That's what I want to know. God bless you all till next time. I love you all so much and I'll be back with our next message. Bye everyone. God bless you.